Hello fellow Stoic enthusiasts. Today, let's delve into the wisdom of Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that sheds light not only on resilience in tough times, but also on the importance of surrounding ourselves with supportive and enriching relationships. Relationships aren't just add-ons to our lives, they can profoundly impact our well-being and happiness. In this video, we'll explore 12 signs that might indicate it's time to reassess certain relationships, maybe even to the extent of letting go. Stoicism teaches us to actively choose paths aligned with wisdom, justice, courage, and moderation, ensuring our inner tranquility and moral growth. Join me as we uncover these insights, guiding each step towards personal peace and a deeper understanding of a fulfilling life. Whether you're seeking to nurture healthier relationships or muster the courage to make tough choices, this discussion offers tools and perspectives to transform how you approach connections with others. Let's embark on this journey together, learning to part ways with grace and safeguard our most valuable asset, our peace of mind. If you appreciate our content, hitting the subscribe button is the simplest favor you can do for us. And remember, each part of this discussion holds valuable insights, so don't skip any. So, fasten your seatbelts and join us as we journey into the wisdom-laden world of Stoicism. Number 1. Continual Disregard for Others Basically, respect is like the foundation of a strong relationship. It's what everything else is built on. In the world of Stoicism, respect is closely tied to justice, which means treating others fairly and with dignity. So when someone consistently disrespects you, it's not just rude. It's like they're chipping away at your dignity bit by bit. And that's a big problem, not just for your feelings, but also for living according to Stoic principles. Stoics see every interaction as a chance to practice being wise and just. When someone disrespects you over and over again, they're not just hurting your feelings. They're getting in the way of you living a good life by Stoic standards, Stoicism teaches us not to get mad or bitter when people disrespect us, but to respond calmly and logically. That means recognizing disrespect for what it is, a failure to live virtuously. It's not about blaming anyone or holding a grudge, but about understanding how other people's actions affect our quest to live well, and deciding if those relationships are worth keeping in our lives. Dealing with disrespect isn't just about reacting. It's about taking action to protect our mental peace and moral integrity. It's about choosing to stand up for ourselves and our values, even if it means walking away from relationships that don't treat us right. This isn't just about looking out for ourselves. It's about showing that we value ourselves and are committed to living with dignity and justice, the stoic way. Number two, negative effects on mental health. Talking about how relationships affect our mental health in everyday terms can really drive the point home. Basically, the people around us can have a big impact on how we feel mentally. Stoicism teaches us to prioritize staying calm and peaceful, not by ignoring our emotions, but by understanding and managing them well, especially when others are involved. If someone in your life is constantly making you feel anxious, down, or stressed out, it's a sign that the relationship might be doing more harm than good. Stoicism doesn't just tell us to tough it out. It tells us to create environments that help us thrive. Relationships that always drain your emotional energy or leave you feeling small can really mess with your ability to feel calm and focused. Stoics believe that our inner state matters more than what's happening outside, but they also know we have a duty to protect our inner peace from outside disruptions. Seneca, a famous Stoic, often talked about the importance of hanging around people who lift us up and staying away from those who bring us down. Thinking about how a relationship affects your mental health isn't just about noticing bad feelings, it's about doing something to make sure those feelings don't control you. That might mean setting boundaries or even taking some space from people who always mess with your peace of mind. By doing that, you're not running away from discomfort, you're actively choosing a path that lines up with Stoic values, a life marked by clear thinking, emotional strength, and, most importantly, peace. When a relationship keeps messing with your mental health, it's a sign to rethink things and maybe change up who you spend time with. It's not a failure to stick it out. It's a smart move to make your life happier and more balanced. 
which is what Stoicism is all about. Number three, misaligned principles. So let's talk about what happens when our core beliefs don't line up with those of the people close to us. Our beliefs and values are like our inner compass, guiding us through life's twists and turns and helping us make choices that reflect who we are. But when the values of someone close to us clash with ours on the regular, it can create some serious inner turmoil. Stoicism is all about finding harmony within ourselves and living with integrity. So when our beliefs don't mesh with those of our loved ones, it's not just a little awkward, it's a big deal. Stoics believe that true peace of mind comes from living virtuously and sticking to rational principles. So when someone important to us lives by different values, it messes with our ability to find that peace. For instance, let's say honesty is a big deal for you, but someone close to you has a habit of stretching the truth. That difference can become a constant source of tension and discomfort, wearing away at the trust and respect that hold relationships together. Stoics encouraged us to think carefully about who we surround ourselves with, making sure they help us grow morally and personally. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Stoic, often wrote about how important it is to hang out with people who embody the virtues we're striving for. When our values don't match up with those of our friends or family, it can stop us from growing as Stoics. We might end up compromising our values or feeling like we're constantly at odds with our ethics. Dealing with these clashes means taking a good, hard look at the relationship. It might mean having some honest chats where everyone gets to air their values and see if there's any common ground. But if the gap between your values is too big, it might be time to rethink how that relationship fits into your life. It's not about saying the other person is wrong. It's about realizing that not every relationship helps us become better, more ethical people. Recognizing and dealing with these value mismatches isn't just about keeping our inner peace. It's about making sure our relationships support our journey to living a good, fulfilling life. And that's what Stoicism is all about, finding tranquility and ultimately happiness through living in line with our values. Number four, persistently feeling exhausted. So let's talk about what happens when being around someone leaves you feeling constantly wiped out. In any good relationship, the energy you exchange should be refreshing, not draining. If you're consistently feeling depleted after spending time with someone, it's a big sign that something's off in the relationship, especially from a stoic point of view. Stoicism teaches us to be mindful of our inner energy and to use it wisely. Philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius stress the importance of being in relationships that give back to us, rather than ones that suck us dry emotionally or physically. Feeling constantly exhausted after being with someone isn't just a minor annoyance. It's a serious drain on the very things you need to live well by stoic standards. It can show up in different ways, like feeling emotionally drained, dreading interactions, or even just feeling physically tired all the time. These signs suggest that the relationship isn't giving you what you need to thrive, which goes against stoic principles. According to stoicism, Every relationship should add to your life and help you grow into a better, more virtuous person. Dealing with draining relationships means figuring out why they're draining you in the first place. Is it because of a lack of support, one-sided interactions, or the other person's constant negativity or demands? Pinpointing the cause is the first step in deciding how to handle things. Whether it's having an honest chat about how you feel, setting clearer boundaries, or in some cases, stepping back from the relationship to protect your peace and well-being. Managing these draining interactions isn't just about getting rid of negativity, it's about making space for relationships that lift you up, support you, and help you grow. Relationships that line up with stoic values of mutual respect and personal development. Each relationship should add value to your life, not drain it, allowing you to thrive and make positive contributions to the world around you. Number five using deceitful tactics to influence others. In Stoicism, being true to yourself and seeing things clearly are super important. Manipulation, though, is like the opposite of that. It messes with reality to benefit the manipulator, leaving you feeling confused and making decisions that might not be in your best interest. 
That's definitely not in line with living a thoughtful, virtuous life, the stoic way. Manipulation in relationships can be sneaky. It might involve outright lying or more subtle tactics, like making you feel guilty or doubting your own memories. For Stoics, this is a big deal, because they're all about seeing things as they really are, without any distortions from the outside. Dealing with manipulation means sticking to your Stoic principles, seeking the truth, staying true to yourself, and keeping your independence. That might mean setting clear boundaries with the manipulator, or being more aware of the signs of manipulation. It's important to stick to your values, and not just react impulsively to their tricks. Dealing with manipulation also involves reflecting on the nature of the relationship and how you respond to it. This can help you figure out if the relationship can be saved through honest communication and mutual effort, or if it's better to step back. In Stoicism, keeping your moral integrity and peace of mind often means making tough choices, especially when it comes to protecting yourself from harmful influences. Breaking free from manipulative relationships isn't just about getting away from the negativity. It's about getting back on track with the stoic goal of living an honest, authentic life. That shift can lead to clearer thinking, better decisions, and a deeper sense of peace, which are all central to the stoic way of life. Number 6. Distrust. So, let's talk about trust. It's not just some part of a relationship, it's the whole foundation everything else is built on. In Stoicism, trust is tied to the idea of justice, being fair, honest, and reliable. Without trust, relationships become shaky, full of doubt and insecurity, which makes it hard to truly connect with someone. Stoicism teaches us to be dependable and truthful, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it creates an environment where trust can grow. When trust is missing, it's often because these Stoic values aren't being lived up to. This can lead to a lot of negative feelings and behaviors, suspicion instead of openness, fear instead of hope. Dealing with trust issues means going back to Stoic principles. It means asking yourself honestly if you're doing everything you can to be transparent and reliable. Stoicism encourages us to face these questions head on and focus on integrity and honesty to rebuild trust. If the trust issues are coming from the other person, a Stoic might approach the situation with empathy but also with firmness in setting boundaries. This could mean having tough conversations to figure out what's causing the trust issues, or even stepping back from the relationship if they can't be fixed. Trust isn't just important for relationships. It's also a big deal in Stoicism. Stoics value the peace that comes from knowing you're in a reliable, secure relationship. When trust is missing, it's a sign that something needs to change in line with Stoic ideals, this process isn't just about making relationships better, it's about staying true to yourself and your philosophical beliefs. Trust is a big deal, and when it's lacking, it's a sign to rethink things and maybe adjust the way you're living according to Stoic principles. Number 7. Abuse of any kind. Stoicism staunchly opposes any kind of mistreatment, whether it's physical, emotional, or verbal. These behaviors go against the fundamental Stoic principle of treating all human beings with inherent dignity and respect. Abuse contradicts the very essence of leading a virtuous and meaningful life, according to Stoic teachings. In Stoic philosophy, enduring abuse is never viewed as necessary. Instead, Stoics prioritize the preservation of one's self-respect and well-being above all else. Marcus Aurelius emphasized the importance of maintaining an inner citadel, safeguarding our mental peace against external adversities, including abuse. Recognizing and addressing abuse is vital not only for personal safety, but also for mental health and dignity. Stoicism advocates for a clear and immediate distancing from abusive situations, not out of retaliation, but as a rational decision to protect oneself from harm. This approach aligns with the Stoic practice of self-care, emphasizing proactive steps to preserve well-being, and ensure that relationships and environments contribute positively to moral and philosophical goals. If you find yourself facing abuse, it's essential to take steps to protect yourself and seek support from trusted individuals or professionals. Stoicism teaches not only endurance in adversity, but also wise and courageous action to safeguard dignity and well-being. 
This may involve reaching out for guidance and support to ensure safety and respect in challenging situations. Number 8. Stagnation or Lack of Mutual Encouragement In Stoicism, personal and moral growth aren't just encouraged. They're at the core of living a good life. Stoics view life as a continuous journey of improvement and learning, stressing the importance of supporting each other on the path toward virtue and wisdom. When a relationship lacks growth or mutual support, it goes against these Stoic ideals and can hinder your personal development. Stoic philosophers like Seneca and Epictetus often discuss synergia, or mutual cooperation, highlighting the role of relationships in our moral education and self-improvement. A healthy relationship should be a mutual exchange where both parties challenge and uplift each other to become better human beings. This support involves offering encouragement during tough times and actively contributing to each other's growth through honest feedback, shared experiences, and constant encouragement to stick to one's principles. If you're in a relationship where you're not growing or being supported in your growth, it can feel like you're stuck while the world moves forward. This stagnation can lead to dissatisfaction and a sense that your potential is being limited. In Stoicism, such situations require introspection and action. This might involve having open and honest conversations about your needs and expectations, redefining the relationship's goals, or even recognizing that the relationship no longer aligns with your development. Stoicism teaches that sometimes the most courageous action is to distance oneself from relationships that don't serve one's higher purpose of living virtuously. Every relationship should be an opportunity to practice virtues and help each other advance toward wisdom and happiness. Recognizing and addressing the lack of growth and support isn't just about seeking personal satisfaction, but about aligning relationships with fundamental values and striving for a flourishing life in accordance with Stoic principles. Number 9. Continual Self-Centered Actions in Stoic philosophy, relationships are seen as essential arenas for practicing virtues like generosity, fairness, and reciprocity. They're meant to be dynamic exchanges where both parties give and receive support. Continual self-centered behavior in a relationship directly contradicts Stoic ethics, which emphasize mutual benefit and support. This imbalance not only damages the integrity of the relationship, but also impedes personal and moral growth central to Stoic philosophy. When one person consistently prioritizes their own needs over their partners, it disrupts the balance necessary for a healthy partnership. Stoicism teaches that virtue lies in self-control and balance, requiring individuals to consider their partner's well-being as equal to their own. Persistent selfishness breeds resentment and dissatisfaction, eroding trust and affection over time. Addressing selfish behavior involves honest reflection and communication. Stoic practices encourage calmly expressing concerns and focusing on restoring balance rather than assigning blame. It's about initiating a dialogue to encourage a more generous spirit within the relationship. However, Stoicism also respects individual autonomy. If attempts to restore balance fail, Stoicism advises recognizing when a situation is beyond one's control and considering distancing oneself from unvirtuous relationships. In the Stoic view, every interaction is an opportunity to practice virtue. A relationship tainted by selfishness isn't just a personal challenge, it's a philosophical one, hindering the pursuit of a good life defined by mutual respect, support, and continuous growth. Recognizing and addressing such challenges isn't just about personal happiness, but about living a moral and ethical life that enriches both oneself and others. Number 10. Harmful or Detrimental Communication In Stoic philosophy, the way we communicate reflects our commitment to rationality and wisdom. Communication in any relationship should not only be honest but also constructive and uplifting. Stoicism teaches that our words should embody our virtues, as they have the power to either uplift and support others, or degrade and undermine them. Consistently negative communication patterns like criticism, sarcasm, and belittling can erode the foundation of respect and understanding in a relationship. When communication becomes consistently destructive, it doesn't just cause immediate hurt, 
It can fundamentally alter how individuals perceive each other, eroding trust and affection over time. The Stoic approach to this issue involves a mindful examination of not just what is said, but how it's expressed. Stoicism teaches us to control our reactions and choose our words wisely, ensuring they align with principles of justice and kindness. This means actively infusing conversations with positivity and support, and addressing disputes with the intent to resolve conflicts and rebuild understanding rather than to win arguments or belittle others. Addressing and transforming destructive communication requires deliberate effort. It may involve setting specific goals for how to speak and respond in conversations, practicing active listening, or seeking external help like counseling to improve communication skills. Self-reflection, a key Stoic practice, involves regularly assessing our own communication habits to ensure they align with our ethical and philosophical goals. If efforts to reform communication patterns don't lead to improvement, Stoicism acknowledges the importance of protecting one's well-being. In cases where negative communication persists and proves damaging, distancing oneself may be necessary to preserve personal tranquility and integrity. This decision, guided by Stoic wisdom, is viewed as a necessary step toward maintaining a virtuous life unclouded by continual discord. Number 11. Neglect of Individual Necessities in Stoicism, respecting personal needs and boundaries is crucial for both self-respect and maintaining harmony in relationships. Ignoring or downplaying these aspects can create significant imbalances, fostering an environment where disrespect and dissatisfaction thrive. Stoic philosophy emphasizes clear communication and mutual respect as foundational to healthy relationships. Consistently overlooking or minimizing someone's needs sends a clear message that their well-being isn't a priority in the relationship. This disregard can show up as repeatedly crossing boundaries, making decisions without consulting the other person, or ignoring their feelings and preferences. Such behaviors not only undermine trust and equality, but also erode individual worth and autonomy, which our values Stoics strive to uphold. Addressing these issues begins with recognizing and affirming your own needs and boundaries. From a Stoic perspective, this isn't about selfishness, but about self-care. Ensuring your moral and emotional well-being isn't compromised for the sake of peacekeeping. The next step is to communicate these needs clearly and assertively to your partner or friend, with the intent to educate rather than confront. However, if disregard for your needs persists despite discussions, it may be necessary to reassess the relationship dynamics. Stoicism teaches the importance of surrounding oneself with people who positively contribute to one's life. If a relationship consistently falls short of this standard, causing more turmoil than tranquility, it might be wise to distance oneself. This isn't an act of aggression but a deliberate choice to prioritize personal well-being and moral integrity, key principles of Stoic living. While Stoicism values enduring adversity with courage and resilience, it also underscores the importance of living true to one's principles. A relationship that consistently disregards an individual's needs is likely incompatible with the stoic pursuit of a harmonious and virtuous life. Number 12. Absence of Mutual Obligation In any relationship, mutual accountability isn't just a nice-to-have, it's absolutely essential. Stoicism teaches us that taking responsibility for our actions is a foundational virtue that fosters trust and respect, cornerstones of any enduring relationship. When accountability is absent, it can lead to a breakdown in these critical pillars, causing repeated misunderstandings and eroding the very foundation upon which healthy interactions are built. In Stoic practice, each individual is encouraged to reflect on their actions and own up to them, especially when they've negatively impacted another person. The lack of this accountability can result in a one-sided dynamic where one or both parties feel unheard or disrespected. This imbalance is profoundly destabilizing because relationships in a stoic sense should be a mutual source of support and growth, helping each individual better align with their virtues. Addressing a lack of mutual accountability requires open, honest communication, it entails discussing expectations clearly and agreeing on what accountability looks like for both parties. This might involve setting specific standards for behavior, 
discussing the consequences of actions, and regular check-ins to ensure that both parties feel supported and respected. However, if attempts to establish mutual accountability fail to bring about positive changes, it might be necessary to reassess the viability of the relationship. Stoicism doesn't advocate enduring harmful situations indefinitely. Instead, it suggests seeking out and maintaining relationships that contribute to our moral and personal growth. Fostering an environment where mutual accountability is prioritized isn't just about maintaining harmony. It's about actively cultivating a relationship that respects the Stoic ideals of justice, wisdom, and courage. A relationship that consistently falls short of demonstrating these qualities may not be in alignment with the Stoic path to a fulfilled and virtuous life. As we conclude our journey together, let's remember that the wisdom of the Stoics isn't just ancient text. It's a living, breathing guide for navigating the complexities of modern life. Thank you for joining us today at Stoic Philosopher Insights. If you've reached the end, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Until next time, stay safe, stay stoic.